It is with complete shock and a broken heart that I mourn the passing of Kobe Bryant and his beautiful daughter Gianna and all the victims of this horrific tragedy. My deepest condolences to the families involved, to Laker Nation, to Kobe's fans around the world, and to our local Aces Nation. It may seem odd for a grown man to admit it, but yesterday I lost my hero. Never have I witnessed such passion, work ethic, and intensity, such a unique and purposeful, purposeful drive for greatness. No excuses, no shortcuts, no days off. Kobe set the standard. He was our Superman. Kobe was a phenomenal athlete, a brilliant mind, and the fiercest competitor to walk the earth. And he was an even better father. The bond we shared in raising our young daughters was the source of my greatest pride in our relationship. When Kobe would take my daughter Brynn into his arms for hugs and high fives, our smiles were a mile wide. The joy was incomparable. We had found something more important than basketball. We had discovered our purpose. It is not often in life where you see pure greatness. I was lucky enough to have a front row seat to it for four years. He pushed me as a coach to be better, and I pushed him right back. It was a beautiful winning combination for which I will forever be grateful. Our ACES motto is hard work, dedication, results. No one did it any better. Moving forward seems nearly impossible, but I wonder if Kobe would tell us to bounce the ball, sweep the sneakers, and compete. We will continue to seek your inspiration daily and honor your legacy with our current and future aces. We will never let your aces nation down. I love you, Kobe Bean Bryant. Thank you for all you have done for me, for the Lower Marion basketball, and for the world. Rest in peace. Wanted to thank everybody uh, for the outpouring of support for me and my family. Hundreds of texts, hundreds of emails, hundreds of phone calls from players, other coaches, alums, parents, friends, and the great fraternity of Philadelphia coaches. Jay Wright, Billy Lang, Phil Martelli, Fran Dunphy, Steve Donahue, Ashley Howard, Brett Brown, just to name a few. Philly coaches united for each other when a man is down or in a time of need. Our own Aces Nation group is hundreds if not thousands of supporters. We are strong. We have each other's backs. I don't know how or when we will get through this, but we will, without a shadow of a doubt, find a way. Secondly, I don't want today to lose sight of the other seven victims. You are in my deepest thoughts and prayers. And thank you to the press for coming out today. I appreciate your patience. Uh, the past few days have been poor sleep, poor nutrition, and lots of tears. But I want you to do your job and I want you to do it well, and uh, this was as quick as I could get out here, and I appreciate your patience. That will take, uh, we'll take questions for next time. Coach, can you talk about your relationship over the years with Kobe from after 1996? Well, we stayed in touch, and uh, you know, I was at the draft when it looked like he was selected by the Charlotte Hornets. My first reaction was, Charlotte, that's kind of cool. They've got Glenn Rice. It's not that far away. Hopefully I can make some of those games. And a few hours later, uh, a trade by Jerry West and the Los Angeles Lakers sent him out to the purple and gold. Um, I followed every second of his 20-year career as a player. Uh, I went to multiple games. Uh, I watched as many games as I could. Uh, I worked his basketball camp uh, quite often in the summer, and we kept in touch. Uh, he considers Lower Marion to be his alma mater, and he and I had a absolutely fantastic relationship. One built on a love of winning, 
a hatred of losing, and quite frankly, a, a love of one another. Coach, you said you became your hero. Do you remember when that moment was? Was there a certain time when that happened? It was after he died. I, I just came up with that. I, I, I'm having a hard time processing a, a lot of this, as many people are. But um, my heart hurt so bad and my insides hurt so bad that I, I, I realized that I, that I had lost my hero. I was so proud to have coached him, so proud every time I saw him, and uh, never saw a human being seek excellence uh, like him. I'm glad that hero remark is out, it's accurate, and I fully believe that a lot of little kids lost their hero, and, and a grown man called Coach Downer lost his also. Coach, you had an opportunity to talk to your players, and these are the guys who have grown up watching Kobe, kind of model their game after Kobe. What have you told them just in the last 24 to 48 hours? I told them there's a lot of circulating emotions. Uh, we have to take the 10 or 15 emotions that are circulating, and we have to quantify them down to three or four emotions if we can. When I try to think about what Kobe Bryant would want to have happen in a situation like this, I think he would want us to get back to the bouncing ball as quickly as possible. Um, we are getting back to the bouncing ball. Uh, we had a practice yesterday. We have an important game tonight. But we want to bounce the ball. We want to squeak our sneakers. And I told the kids that you're referencing, we want to compete like crazy. We want to compete like crazy. And the last thing I told the kids was, uh, as difficult as this is, let's try to respect the fact that we have our health. Let's try to respect the fact that we have the ability to do this, to play basketball. And let's try to have a heck of a lot of fun while we're doing it. Greg, you got the coach Kobe relatively early in your coaching career, if I'm not mistaken. Do you ever, have you over the years, and certainly in the last couple of days, thought about how different you might have become as a coach had you not had the opportunity to coach him that early on or if you had maybe later in your career? I guess what I'm asking is how much he might have shaped you over the years. Well, I think I've thought about that question. I think the landscape would be very different if we never had Kobe Bryant. Uh, I've been asked a lot how long I wanted to coach initially. When I met Kobe Bryant, I jokingly said, well, I'm definitely going to be here for four years. Um, this is my 30th year. Uh, I think Aces Nation, I, I think the gym, I think our the pathway of our program would, would be very different had we not met him. He taught us how to win. He taught us how to work hard. He taught us how to not take shortcuts. And once we started having success with Kobe, the bar got very hot, the bar got very high, the bar became a state championship. The bar became let's win 20 games, let's, let's win Central League championships, let's win district championships. And I had a decision after he left, I could lower the bar or I could try to keep the bar high. And after he left, uh, over the past 26 years, I'm proud to say that we've been to four additional state championships. Uh, we've won 15 league titles. We've won two additional state championships without him. But I don't think the momentum for any of this would have ever been there if we were not blessed enough to meet this amazing player and this amazing person, Kobe Bryant. Greg, would you talk about the beginning when you first met him what you thought you might have here and what that was like when you realized this kid's going to come and play. I heard a lot of buzz about a 14-year-old in our middle school. I went to watch one of his games. Uh, they had a weird rule with that team. You had to pass the ball X amount of times or you got benched. So that didn't go too well. Uh, I really wanted to see him play and he kept getting benched. Uh, he shot the ball too quickly a couple of times. 
So I saw him after that game and I said, hey, you know, maybe you should come up and practice with our varsity. Maybe that would give me a, a better look at you. Uh, five minutes into that first varsity practice, I turned to my multiple assistant coaches and I said, this kid is a pro. At the time, he was six foot two, 140 pounds, 14 years old. His six foot ten father was standing off in the corner. I knew who he was genetically. As a kid in Section H in the mid 70s, I was a season ticket holder for the uh, for the Sixers on a ball club that Jelly Bean Joe Bryan, his father, played for. Six seats down to my left in Section H was Kobe's grandfather. Back then I was watching Daryl Dawkins, George McGinnis, World Be Free, and when I patched all this together and I saw how great he was at the age of 14, I knew right away that I was in for the ride of a lifetime as a coach. Where, where were you on Sunday? 